In the op-amp circuit example shown here, implemented using four ideal op-amps, we want to quickly analyze and show that it actually solves this third-order differential equation. How is this possible, and how can how quickly we can we can solve this? Let's make the assumption that the positive-negative voltage supplies are properly connected for all op-amps and negative feedback dominant. Therefore, as a result, virtual short is valid for. Uh, virtual short is valid for each op amp, which means that the voltage at positive input terminal is the same voltage at negative input terminal. Okay, so how is that helpful? Look at all the positive input terminals for the op amp. They are connected to virtual ground. So as a result, I'm going to write zero volt on negative terminals due to virtual short matching uh, the two input, the voltages of the two input terminals. With that in mind, let's write a quick KCL here. Um, so at the very last node, but uh, before that, maybe the best the best approach is actually focus on this part of the circuit first. In this part of the circuit, there is a simple inverting amplifier. So let me change the color so that it's easier to write. Okay, so here we have an inverting amplifier in the form of an integrator. So effectively, an ideal low-pass filter of first order. But uh, to just quickly write relationship between, say, V1, which is the voltage at its input, to V out, you can write a simple KCL here, which says the current that goes through this resistor R is the same current that goes through this capacitor C, because nothing can come or go out of the input terminal of ideal op-amp, because it has effectively or practically inf infinite input impedance. Now. What I said in, in terms of the current through resistor and cap is equal, it means V1 minus 0 divided by R, that's current through resistor, is equal to 0 minus V out divided by the impedance of cap, that's the current, this whole thing is the current through the cap. So if we just clean up, it means V1 is just negative RCS, and then let me just make sure. Okay, so V1 is negative RCS times V have V out. Nice. This is uh, effectively in S domain uh, for input, uh, the derivative of output. So uh, it means that in time domain, we are dealing with DV1. We are dealing with V1. So we are dealing with V1 equal to negative RC DV out dt, so first derivative effectively of output appears at this node. Um, and uh, later we will see that we can set rc equal to 1, so that doesn't matter to us. Uh, but let's keep it for now as a parameter, but we will set rc equal to 1 because it's an option or choice of the designer. Now let's focus on this portion as well. So I'm going to now move on to say, uh, to just clean up. I'm going to move on to this portion of the circuit. And you can see this portion of the circuit is exactly copy-paste of the first portion I showed you. Let's name the voltage here as V2 at the input of this portion. It's again an inverting amplifier integrator. Um, so for the same reason, the input-output relationship is a copy-paste of what I just said. So um, I can say V2, the input, See here, I'm saying input is negative RCS output here. Input is negative, input is negative RCS output. So for the same reason, V2 input is negative RCS output of this portion highlighted, which is V1. But then I'm going to substitute from equation, let's say, 1 for V1. And as a result, I'm going to get negative RCS and V1 is clearly negative RCS V out, so therefore I get the final outcome I wanted, which is effectively, um, let me shift this whole thing so that there is enough space to put it there. There you go. Okay, so I can say V2 is just R square, C square, S square, V out. So the second derivative of V out appears at this node. Interesting. So the first derivative of V out is here, and effectively, as we found, is just a negative RC first derivative of V out. The second derivative of V out is here, 
which we just found, I'm going to write it in time domain equivalence instead of S domain, becomes R square, C square, S square, second derivative of V out with respect to time. So R square, C square, uh, sorry, there is no S. That So we need to be careful. All right. This S square V out is what translate to the second derivative. The same thing as this S V out translated to the first derivative that I just showed. Um, maybe I just uh, shift a little bit so that it's easier to see what I just wrote. Okay. So with that in mind, uh, this V2 translate to, so effectively this V2 is conveying the meaning of the second derivative for V out here. All right, so lesson learned. At this node, we have first derivative. At this node, we have the second derivative of output. Now we are ready to write a KCL at this node. So KCL here, or basically Kirchhoff current law, or law of preservation of current that says the current I1 that is coming through this 2R resistor should be equal to the two currents that are going out, one current through this cap, one current I3 through this resistor R. So I'm going to write a KCL in which I am saying I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. I already set the voltage here Vx as a reference, so um, that helps me with writing KCL. Let's substitute for these currents. I1 is the current through this 2R, as shown here. Therefore, it's just a plus minus uh, v voltage V out minus zero, which is the voltage here, obviously. So we get V out minus zero divided by 2R equal to, for I2, it means this current, the current through the cap, same reason, zero voltage here, and then minus V2, the voltage basically across the cap, divided by impedance of cap, 1 over Cs in S domain, plus I3, for the same reason, is now zero minus Vx, divided by R, Let's uh, multiply all sides with R and just clean up, and we get to this final outcome that 0.5 V out, instead of V out over 2, I'm going to write 0.5 V out, is equal to negative RCS, um, and then V2, and finally negative Vx. So if I shift this so that it's also easily seen, okay. So what I get is this outcome, which I'm going to keep as equation, let's say, 2. Okay, now what I'm missing? Well, I already have our, uh, in equation 1 that I showed you here, or let's say in equation, let's name this equation 2 here. Let's name this equation 3 here. So I already have V2 as a function of V out in equation 2, uh, and V1 as a function of V out in equation 1. I already have those. In this, in this equation, I can substitute V2 uh, and then as a function of V out. The only problem is I don't know what Vx is, but that's easy. If you focus now on the initial portion of circuit, which is this portion here. So I'm talking about uh, changing the color. This portion. It is effectively, this op-amp one here is effectively a summing amplifier, summing inverting amplifier in which three things are arriving uh, or generating currents that are arriving at this input node. One is voltage Vn that is causing this current. The other one is the voltage V1 or basically first derivative that is causing this current. And finally, voltage V2 uh, that is, or second derivative effectively, that is causing this current through 5R. So these three currents are coming at, uh, uh, entering, or let's say, the input node, and then the result is summed up into an outgoing current, into the feedback resistor, which is R, for the amplifier that is shown here. So I can just write KCL uh, effectively, um, but one could have written the equation for the 
uh, output Vx of this inverting summing amplifier quickly using law of superposition. But uh, let's quickly just write the KCL rather than making assumptions here. So let me write that here at the bottom of the figure and we have enough space. So what I'm going to write is, uh, is like this. And I'm going to keep the color, let's say, um, this way. Okay, so I'm going to write Vn minus 0. That is the voltage across 2.5R. Okay, is equal to, so is equal to V in minus 0 divided by 2.5R. That's the current to the 2.5R. Plus, I need the current to 4R, which means which means obviously uh, uh, the V1 uh, minus 0. So effectively I'm saying um, V1 minus 0 divided by 4R. And finally I need the current to the 5R, which is just voltage V2 minus 0 divided by 5R. divide by 5R. So these are the three incoming current should be equal to the outgoing current, which means voltage zero minus, across. so I'm talking about the current going to this feedback resistor R. Uh, so zero minus zero, the voltage at this node. Um, and then we have zero minus VA, Vx at the output, divide by the value of resistor. So multiplying, or let's say canceling R from all side, uh, we get just uh, 1 over 2.5, which is effectively 0.4 Vn, is plus 0.25, 1 over 4, V1, and uh, plus 1 over 5, which is 0.2, V2, is equal to negative Vx. Okay, so I'm going to refer to this as equation number, say, uh, 4. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute for uh, Vx here using equation 4. So then I'm going to write using equation 4. So using equation 4 and 3, I get 0.5 V out is equal to negative RCS V2. But then, let's keep it as V2 for now. Minus Vx is there is negative sign here and there is negative sign here. So cancel out each other. So it becomes plus Vx, plus the rest of it, which is 0.4 uh, Vn. And then 0.25 V1 and 0.2 V2. Okay, so um, let's just... Um, Make sure that I'm not making any mistake. Okay, then the last step is I'm going to use equations 1 and 2, which basically define V2, V1 as functions of Vr. So, and I'm going to move things around. So move, move everything related to V out to the other side and keep 0.4 V in two in one side. So as a result, what I'm going to get is I get... Um, negative RCS instead of V2 from equation 2 I have I have RS square CS square um, so let's make sure okay so R square uh, CS square sorry R square CS square S square V out so I move this guy to the other side got, got rid of the negative sign and then substituted for V2 from equation 2 and um, I get um, this one, which says, so when you move it to the other side, it becomes negative 0.2. So negative 0.2, and then V2 is just R square, C square, S square, V out. And when you move this one to the other side, it becomes negative 0.25 V1. But then using equation 1, I know V1 is already negative RCS, so it becomes negative 0.25 and then negative RCS V out. Okay, so uh, I, I got all the components uh, on the other side that I wanted. The last one is, of course, uh, I have plus 0.5 V out. 
and all these should be equal to if I move this thing a little bit here all these should be equal to point 0.4 Vn so point 0.4 Vn is equal to this result okay so the last step that I need to do is just uh, clean up I get point 0.4 Vn is equal to R cube C cube S cube V out and uh, minus point uh, 2 R square C square S square V out and uh, I get minus uh, plus there is minus and then minus which means plus so plus point 0.25 R square RCS V out plus point 0.5 V out so um, and also if we multiply all side by 10 I get point 0.4 so I'm just doing everything in one step so point 0.4 is equal to so 4 10 times and then minus 2 and plus 2.5 and finally plus 5 okay um, keep take a look at what we wanted to prove on top so you can see it's already matching the equation we have 4v in and 4v in showing up and we wanted 10 uh, third derivative negative 2 second derivative and 2.5 first derivative and then 5v out so they are exactly matching the equation we wanted this is in s domain if you want to write it in in terms of time domain that's exactly going to translate to what is written on top I'm going to just move it from top to here that is exactly going to be look like uh, this equation so in summary um, I hope that this analysis is helpful in terms of showing an interesting circuit that is able to solve a third order analog circuit that is or analog computer that is able to solve in real time the computation of or the solution for the third order differential equation that is given here so any any similar um, linear differential equation of third order with proper selection of the value of resistor and capacitor can be solved here in this case we make the assumption that as I said at the beginning that RC is set to 1 if you set it so then of course with the RC set to 1 this equation translates to exactly what we wanted in time domain uh, keep in mind that SV out is the one that translates to uh, the first derivative and uh, uh, S squared S squared V out in S domain is the one that translates to the second derivative and finally the S cube V out is the one that translates to uh, the first the, the third derivative that is shown here I hope that this example is helpful